has become a second home to Bluefield High School and the place where they now return to defend their title against rival Weir High. I'm happy Weir's in it because they've had heartbreaking losses the last you know, two years and now they have an opportunity to try and win it all. Man, it's great, you know, to come from come overcome what we've came this season, you know, with the four losses in the regular season, to getting to getting to go to Wheeling again is great. Weir and Bluefield have struck up a rivalry over the past few years that's as fierce as any age-old tradition. The last two times they've met, the games were decided in overtime. They're very intense and uh, they, they happen and uh, a lot of tradition and pride and, and kids that want to win, and that's what it is. It's been a fantastic season, a season that uh, our, we feel our kids have gotten better from one week to the next. We're probably playing their best football now with championship teams do. And, and it's going to be a great game at the Island Friday night, I'm sure. And, uh, two great football teams, two proud programs with a lot of tradition. It's sure to be an exciting game here at Wheeling Island Stadium. Bluefield versus Weir High. Join us now for the AA Championship game here on the Sports Zone. presents the Super Six, the West Virginia High School Football Championships. Our first of three championships this weekend from Wheeling Island Stadium is a double-A title affair. The Weir Red Riders set to take on the Blue Field Beavers. We're back in with more in a moment. Charter Communications presents the Super Six, the West Virginia High School Football Championships. First up tonight, our Class AA Championship game, the Bluefield Beavers and the Red Riders from Weir. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody. Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Scott Grayson tonight from WBOI Channel 12 in Clarksburg. Yep, Welcome, thank you. Scott. Glad to be here. Now, this should be a very intense game, our first of three championship games this weekend. Weir and Bluefield. Bluefield has upset Weir the last two years, both of those games in overtime, last year in the semifinal round. Weir wants some payback tonight. Well, yeah, and you might just see that tonight. One of the best things about this game is that it's sort of developed a rivalry over the last three years. Some of the best rivalries are formed in the playoffs. They're separated by more than 300 miles, but they've been meeting a lot, and now it's great to see them meeting in a championship game. Bluefield is the number 11 seed in AA. Weir is the number 4 seed, and Weir was the number 4 seed when they won this championship with Quincy Wilson back in 1998. Bluefield started the regular season with two losses. They ended the regular season with two losses, yet they are in the championship game tonight, and they are all fired up about it. Man, it's, it, there's just something there. You know, over the past two years, we've actually built that rivalry. Really, we played them in 97, and it just built over the past three years, really, of the past three times these teams have met, and we're just we're just ready to go. It's, something special always happens in that game. I mean, I mean, both teams are hungry for each other every year. It's great to finally meet them on the island. I mean, you know, people can really say this is a championship game because it will be. I believe that we can fight to the end. We never doubt ourselves, and we go and practice and play hard as we can, and we got faith in ourselves that we can go back and do whatever it is that, that can be accomplished. What a wild game it was last year in the semifinals. 21-20, Bluefield outlasted Weir. Weir had a late lead in the fourth quarter, but they couldn't put the game in the barn. Time to meet the third member of our broadcast crew tonight, Jared Fialco. Jared, what's going on? I hope you're bundled up tonight. Yeah, it is very cold down here. Wind chill expected to get about 11 degrees. The good news for both of these teams is everybody you see on the field here behind us is healthy and ready to go. Both coaches say Bluefield Beavers 100% active, everybody ready to go. The only question mark for the Weir Red Riders is place kicker Ryan Dennis. He strained a muscle last week before the Wayne game. Good news is for them though, he has a questionable game time decision. He might be ready to go, but if he is not, Josh Smith, the tailback, has also been practicing some chip shots here in the pregame, but if he's not ready to go, it looks like we could be seeing a lot of two-point conversions tonight, guys. All right, Jared, we look forward to your reports tonight. Sometimes it comes down to those kicks. This is what they're playing for, the hardware. We're back to kick it off from Wheeling Island Stadium in a moment. The Charter Communications Super Six Championships are brought to you by Charter, get hooked, and by People's Federal Credit Union in Nitro and Eleanor. Well, both teams came out to shake hands before the coin toss tonight. And uh, we almost 
broke out in a WWE match. <laughs> you know, there's an awful lot of talk about our game tomorrow, the intensity that we'll see with between Nitro and Morgantown. But Scott, I got to tell you, Weir and Bluefield, this is going to be an emotional game as well. Yeah, and if you had any doubts about that, that just obviously proved otherwise. You could see coaches in there trying to break things up, but some of the coaches were also yelling at the other team's coaches to get their players back, and really, this is going to be an interesting storyline to follow. We, of course, talked about the rivalry. Let's send it down to Jared Fialco. Jared, why did Weir go back into the locker room for a moment after they came out to shake hands with Bluefield? Well, guys, you might have seen Weir did go into the locker room while Bluefield stayed out here on the field. I spoke with one of the assistant coaches. He said it was just to cool off a little bit, let cooler heads prevail before something bad happened and things really got out of hand. They said Coach Eric Meek did not say a single word in there. No one said a single word. They just collected their thoughts, come out, and are ready to go. Guys, it's just what playoff football is all about, I guess. All right. Jared, we appreciate it, and we look forward to your reports tonight. Bluefield, as you can see, they are in the white and in the red and the black, the Red Riders. Bluefield will get the football first tonight. And I'll tell you what, we are ready for what should be a very, very entertaining game. And there's a good crowd here, too, so definitely you should expect some intensity coming over, and it's a great atmosphere for some high school football right here. Vincent Powery is sent to kick off for Weir. And the Class AA Championships are underway. Sean Brooks with the football, and he brings it out to the 24-yard line. And that's where the Beavers will start first and 10. The Beavers, they are 8 and 4. They are the 11th seed. The Red Riders of Weir, they are the number 4 seed. They are 12 and 1. Weir knocked off top-seeded Wayne last week on the road to get into the championship game. And Bluefield, of course, they have got a terrific record in the playoffs. Seventh trip to the finals in the last 11 years, 15 trips since 1959. They've been in the finals four years in a row, and they will start from the I formation. And on first down, they will go to the fullback, and there is just no operating room there. A gain of perhaps a half yard by carrier. Alan Carter, right. the junior. He's got great size, 6'1", 262. We anticipate that we may see as many as seven different Bluefield Beavers the carry the football Beavers. tonight. And there you can see a, a shot of the sidelines. It is cold, but uh, thankfully nine, there is no blowing snow tonight line. and not a lot of wind, at least not yet. Play action on second down. McClanahan on the rollout. The pass is complete up to the 33-yard line. And bumped out of bounds is Travis Steptoe. So Steptoe will go out. Steptoe will go out of bounds, and that'll bring up our first third down situation of the night. And there's a good look at Wheeling Island Stadium. Pretty good crowd, and as you might expect, a lot of representation from the Northern Panhandle for Weir. Third down, any yard, just underway from the 33-yard line. This is the Class AA championship game. So glad you could join us. And the handoff goes again to the fullback, and it's Carter, and Carter's able to bust it across the 35-yard line, up near the 36, and it is a Bluefield first down. Joshua Smith and Joshua Lang in on this stop. Let's check our starting lineups for the game tonight. And we'll begin with the backs and receivers for Bluefield. McClanahan is the quarterback. He's just a sophomore. Pal started the season as the quarterback, got hurt, and now he's back. This is a good offensive line. Harris, Albert Collins, Hutchinson, and Morton up front. And on first down, a cutback move. Across the 45 and out near midfield. And that's Jerome Powell. You can call him JT. Michael Papo started the, the year as the quarterback, the came school. back into the action in the playoffs, returned in the Grafton game, and he has added to what is already a very good offensive ball, attack. The Here's the line. defensive lineup for Weir, Hayden Smith, Davidson, and Smith. They'll play a 4-4. They'll have four linebackers in this alignment. Lions, Buffo, Smith, and Larch. Three defensive backs for the Red Riders. Gatto, Taflin and Smith. Oh, 
And we just had a penalty on the play, a legal substitution on Bluefield, so they're going to back up a little bit there, Dave. George Levitsky is our referee tonight. We'll see a variety of crews from around the state of West Virginia work this Super 6 this weekend. Tonight's crew is from the Mason-Dixon board. So it'll be first and 15. The line of scrimmage now for Bluefield is their own 42-yard line. Again, they'll keep it on the ground. And it's Powell. And Powell will pick up about three. So it'll be second down and a dozen. What you're seeing out of Bluefield right now is they're running between the tackles. They're taking that offensive line, and they're just going right at Weir. And we're going to see uh, running right between the tackles is apparently the key for them right now to, to move this ball. Coach saw something in the, in the game films to decide, you know, we're going to move the ball up the middle and try to get some first downs through the air as well, as you've seen. Harris and Albert opened up a nice bit of space that time for Powell on the left side of the line. Second and a dozen. Play action. Rollout. Passes caught wide open into Weir territory and out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Again, it's Steptoe. That's his second reception on the drive. It's another Bluefield first down. You run it up the middle enough times and you give a little play fake, and that play is going to be wide open. The receivers did a great job blocking downfield for him. That allowed him to pick up that first down, and you got to be impressed with how Bluefield starting this game, really moving the ball almost at will. Well, they've been really rushing the ball well effectively in the playoffs in their three playoff wins, averaging just under 275 rushing yards a game and when they do that they can really open up the passing game nowhere to go that time first carry for Sean Brooks he returned the opening kickoff but that was his first carry defensed well by the Red Riders yeah you're gonna look at right they're finally figuring out they're gonna come up the middle with us so we're gonna bring some extra help they got some guys coming on a blitz it looked like coming into the middle there to help bring him down behind the line of scrimmage they're gonna have to do more of that to slow this Bluefield team down. Now this weird defense has been tough in the playoffs in their three playoff wins, averaging less than eight points for their opponents. That's the best this uh, in the playoffs among the double-A teams. And once again, it's Powell, and he's able to slip it inside down near the 29-yard line, and he is very close to a first down. This was an interesting play call, because watch him come from the side here, kind of confusing the defense, and whoop, he's already gone down inside gaining some yards so they're going to try to mix it up now that they're getting that but again running right up the middle uh, we're spent to the top many weeks this season in the number one spot in the ratings they gave away to wayne but they knocked off wayne and there's a big play defensively for Weir, right in the middle of the line, there was just absolutely nowhere to go. The play by Buffo, Michael Buffo, stepping up and making the tackle. And that's not surprising. He is their leading tackler with 172 stops on the year. Yeah, 172 tackles. He definitely has a nose for the ball. Look at the intensity there. A little face paint helping show that he's ready for this game. And he's always around the ball as well. He's got two fumble recoveries this season, an interception, and a touchdown. So you're going to hear his name a lot tonight. Scott, I don't think there's too much room for many more stickers on his helmet. <laughs> on first down. Spinning right to the middle of the line where the, the yards are now becoming a little tougher to come by goes Brooks. And he's able to get forward progress out for a gain of maybe three. It'll be second down and let's call it seven. And again, the defensive line doing a nice job of closing the holes in the middle of the field there to try to prevent Bluefield from getting many yards up there now. And now they finally force some long yarded situations. This is the 10th play of the drive. Fred Simon continues to shuffle backs. Two new backs come into the lineup. So now they'll go with Powell at the tailback spot and Steptoe's at the fullback spot. This is a pitch back to Powell. He's going to try the right side. Gets right behind Steptoe and Weir does a nice job. They stack it up over there on the short side. A gain of maybe a yard, but not much more. And I saw that, that Weir had eight men up front, not even in the box, Dave. They had them on the line of scrimmage to try to slow Bluefield down. And Bluefield went out to the outside, as you see. Everybody pursued down the line of scrimmage and helped keep that run from going anywhere. That was a nice play by the inside linebacker, Jason Larch, 5'11", 160-pound senior. Fred Simon is the head football coach of the Bluefield Beavers and would love to go back-to-back in-state championships. Back to the live action. Looked like they were trying to set up the screen. Instead, they're going to send it long to the end zone. Incomplete. 
And that was Jason Gatto back there who knocked that ball away. And it brings up fourth down. And now what are you going to do if you're Bluefield? And this is an interesting call because you're trying to build up some momentum now. You're sitting at the 27-yard line. That's obviously a long field goal opportunity. But let's take a look at that play one more time. It was a great job by the defensive line to sniff out the screen. You see, that's what they wanted to do there. Then forced to go downfield as McClanahan and man-to-man -man coverage. Nice job defending that play by Gatto getting up and batting it down. Yeah, couldn't uh, get it to Mark Page. Now, Page had a big reception last week, and Sean Cornelius, the field goal kicker for Bluefield, had a 19-yarder last week. But instead, they'll go for it on fourth down and six, and we'll see four wide for the first time. McClanahan steps up, throws, incomplete, nearly intercepted, and the ball goes over on downs, and that's an outstanding defensive play by Jason Gatto. We talked earlier about Mike Buffo and how much he's around the ball. In the secondary, you're going to see Gatto around the ball a lot as well. He's got six interceptions on the air. He took two of them back for touchdowns. And on this play, knows fourth down. Just make sure you bat it down. Was looking for the catch, but getting it down now. Weir takes over after Bluefield had a very long sustained drive. All right, so they took quite a bit of time off the clock. 5.44 to go in our opening period. First opportunity to see Weir's offense. Brandon Sperlaza is the quarterback, and off goes Corey Lyons, the senior, rushed for over 1,500 yards this year, and looks really strong on that first carry, takes it all the way out to the 44-yard line. So what do you do for Weir, right? You're, you just gave up a long drive to Bluefield, finally get possession, and you go right up the gut. A great run by Corey Lyons. He's averaged almost 10 yards per carry this season, so you might see him doing a lot more of that, and he made some great moves on that run to get into the open space. Uh, Lions at 161 yards in their semifinal win at Wayne last week. Now they'll go with just a fullback. And the fullback will get the handoff. And it's Josh Smith, the senior. So you've got, to, well, Josh technically, Smith. I guess you could call Smith the tailback. He, he lined up in what you would uh, refer to as a fullback spot in that lineup. Smith and Lyons both over a 1,000 yards. Watch the determination here. You're not going to stop him. He's going for another yard. Sometimes you can fumble in those positions, but if I'm the head coach, I like what I see out of the trying to get that extra yard. You want your players to come out fired up. Well, that replay showed that Allen Carter nearly stripped that ball away. A gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. This time they'll go from the eye with two wide receivers to the right. Bouncing it outside is Lyons. And Lions will be brought down at the 47-yard line. And look at all the white shirts around that football. Let's check our lineups. And we'll begin with the backs and receivers for Weir. And this is a very good offense. Sperlaza is the quarterback. Smith, Buffo, Tafan, and Gatto. Now, Gatto is a threat at the wide receiver spot. you gotta put, got to have respect for him. Smith, Perry, Hayden, Lang, and Smith up front for the Red Riders. Third down, third down and eight. Out of the eye with two wide receivers to the left. Sperlaza going to throw on the run, incomplete. He got to the outside very quickly, but he one-hopped that ball to the wide receiver. And so Weir picks up one first down on their first possession, and now they're going to have to punt the football away. Uh, that was a, an interesting play call. The, the play was there, but you're getting your quarterback to roll out to the left as a righty. Very tough to make that throw on the run. Jonathan Payne is back to receive the punt for Bluefield. Steve Buffo is on to punt the football for Weir. The long snapper is Josh Franco's. Buffo does a great job to control that, and now he's going to have to run with it. And he's brought down at the 49-yard line. The ball came out after he was down. So the botched punt attempt is going to give great field position to Bluefield. They've got the football at midfield. The Beavers will have their second crack at the football when we return to Wheeling Island Stadium in just a moment. Here in Wheeling Island. Well, Scott Grayson, not exactly what Weir wanted to do in punt formation. No, you get some miscues like this, and, and you can end up giving somebody else great field position in a hurry. It was a great job to at least advance it from where it was. Good composure right there. But yes, this is going to give Bluefield some good field position. On AM 1400 WBBD. Josh Frankos was the snapper, and now Fred Simon and the Beavers will take over at the midfield stripe. Eric Meek 
is the head football coach at Weir. He's in his first season. He's a former assistant on Youngstown State's 1991 1AA title team under Ohio State coach Jim Tressel that rallied in the fourth quarter to beat Marshall. It's first down and 10 ball. First and line. 10 for the Beavers. Second possession. The nose of the football is in weird territory. Fake the end around. McClanahan on a roll. And he lets it go. He had room to run, but he decided to throw instead. And that was a good decision because of the first down at the 37 yard line. The pass is, com pass is completed to J.T. Powell. Yeah, that was a great job by the quarterback and receiver after a long season of playing together. They start getting a feel for each other. What you're going to see is the, the receiver did a nice job of settling down in the middle of what looked like to be a zone from Weir, and he hit him right there for the first down. Good job by Bluefield. How about Powell? He started the season throwing the football, and here he is in the state championship game <laughs> catching it. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. They'll go to the tailback. And that Red Rider defense is a stone wall at the 35-yard line. And how about that defense? Nice play by Dewan Smith, the senior, 5'11", 180 pounds. Yeah, and what, what it's interesting to see is you got the black shirts and the white shirts. It's really easy to see with the red helmets as well how quickly that defense clamped down on Bluefield on that running play there and did a nice job of stopping it. They're really getting their legs under them now, the defense, and as far as stopping the run between the tackles, see if they can keep that up. All right, so the Beavers their second possession and their second possession that is in weird territory as we continue in this quickly moving first quarter and they go to the fullback and it's Carter Carter tries the right side and again the Red Rider defense is there you know one point about Weir, this is really an amazing playoff weekend in the Ohio Valley Athletic Conference Steubenville has already won the Ohio Division three championships earlier today they defeated Columbus to sales and Steubenville Central will go for a championship tomorrow and then of course and you look in this Super Six you've got we're going for the double-a championship tonight and tomorrow night Wheeling Central will try to go for the classic single-a crown. third down and seven and McClanahan does not like what he sees he'll call a timeout and head over to the bench timeout, Beavers. Fred Simon and the Bluefield Beavers need a timeout we will take it with them this is a West Virginia American Water timeout. 2.29 to go in our opening period. No score. Well, if you didn't bring your muffler to the game tonight, you are in, <laughs> you are in a world of hurt. It is definitely cold out there. And as Jared said at the beginning of the game, they're expecting wind chills down around 10, 11 degrees. So if you're here, you better be bundled up. Third down Three and down seven and from the 33-yard line. The 33 yard line. Bluefield reached the weird 27 and then turned the football over on downs in their first possession. Trying to get to the outside and to the 25-yard line goes Jonathan Payne. Now Payne returns punts and Jonathan kickoffs Payne. from Bluefield. He has got tremendous Three speed, lines. and so they try to go to the, the, to the, the, the quick sweep. And Weir defensed it well, but not before he picked up a first down. It's a first and ten. For Bluefield at the 24 yard line. So the Beavers, they've uh, seemingly had the ball the entire first quarter. First down and 10. Continue to march with ball a fresh set of downs as we line. look to move into two minutes to go in our opening period. And let's not forget how they took over here. They got great field position, started just inside the 50 yard line after the botched punt attempt there by Weir. So this is one of those big moments in the game, a drive that they should take advantage of. Now backs are split this time. McClanahan under center, and they'll go right up the middle. And the handoff goes to Powell. And Powell looks like he's in pretty good shape. He takes it down inside the 15-yard line, down to the 13. That's a 12-yard gain on first down and another first down for the Beavers. Take another look at this. Watch him here take a hit. He broke one tackle already, breaks that one slightly, and gets at least falls forward for another couple yards. So did a great job by J.T. Powell early on here, not only taking some hits, but advancing the ball beyond that. That's always big when you're trying to get some momentum. Tell you what, Scott, he got a great block from the center, Allen Collins, that really sprung him. So now McClanahan goes back to the tailback. They're going to change the play on first and 10 from the 13. And that ball is loose, and it's recovered by Weir. Brooks fumbled the football. And the Red Riders come up with it. And the recovery down at the bottom of the pile, Joshua Lang. Josh Lang with the fumble recovery for the Red Riders. A big turnover, a big, big play for Weir. We're back to Wheeling Island Stadium in just a moment. 
All right. First play after the fumble by Weir. While we were away, we had a fumble on the play. This was Weir after Bluefield turned the football over. The One I'm sorry, Dave. One thing we're head coach Eric Meek said is that his team has to win the turnover margin. You see there that first play after they get a turnover, they give it right back. And now Bluefield again cannot ask for better field position than they've had so far in this game. All right. So the fumble recovery was made by J.T. Powell. It's second down and seven for Bluefield at the Weir 15 yard line. How about that fullback? Three backs. And it's Powell, and he will try the left side. And boy, defensively, we're really stiffening up when uh, Bluefield gets near their goal line. One thing I've noticed in the last couple of plays of the previous drive and this one on that play, you saw eight guys up on the line of scrimmage again. Flag on the play. Here's the call. Dead ball. Personal foul on the white. Oh. Boy, oh, boy. I'll tell you what's going on right now is Bluefield is getting every opportunity from Weir to try to strike first and what they're doing is shooting themselves in the foot just about every time when you get a personal foul penalty and you're on offense especially now you're looking at about 25 yards to go for a first down and that can be very hard to come back from. Boy that's a critical penalty against Bluefield. And now the line of scrimmage is the 29 yard line. Bluefield Blue needs to reach the, the eight. For a first down. It is third down and 21. And from this part of the field, you got to anticipate this could be four down territory again for Bluefield. And they will hand it off. They will spurn the pass and they will go to the run. And again, it's Powell, and he has brought down shy of the 25 yard line, given the 26, but not much more. So it's going to be fourth down and long. Fourth down and 18. And Bluefield's going to take the time between periods to talk it over. We have reached the end of the first quarter of play. Fred Simon and the Bluefield Beavers had the ball for the majority of the opening period, but they have no points up on the board. Charter Communications, the Super 6 West Virginia High School Championships Class AA heading to the second quarter. No score. Starting the second quarter as we come back to the live action Bluefield goes for it on fourth and 18 at the 26 yard line and the pass is incomplete a big defensive play made by Dewan Smith so the ball goes over on downs we're they're playing some great defense the, their defense has been protecting their goal line for the majority of this game Mike Buffo already Scott with eight tackles in the first half. Well, when you're on the field that much, it's not hard to come up with eight. Well, it's, it's still a great achievement, but it's not too hard to come up with it when they run, you know, as many plays as they have. All right, here we go. Weir's got the football now. They'll start from their 25 yard. Look at the penetration by the Beavers. They just pour into the backfield, and Corey Lyons never had a chance. Hard to run the ball forward when you're stopped as soon as you get it. You're going to see Weir uh, do a great job of, well, Bluefield, excuse me, do a great job of pursuing up the middle and getting in there to stop that play in the backfield. And Bluefield hasn't had uh, to play defense much so far, but that was a great play right there. Uh, Page was uh, in the backfield nearly as quickly as the football got handed off to Lions. Loss of three, it'll be second down and 13. They'll go from the eye. Merlaza, the senior quarterback, with the pitch back to the tailback. This is Smith trying to get wide. Smith makes one man miss. He's across the 30. Still on his feet. Still going. Working his way out near midfield to the 49-yard line. That's a 26-yard game for Josh Smith. Sometimes it takes big plays like that to turn a game. Bluefield has had many opportunities to score so far this game, but now we're saying, well, you didn't do it. We're going to take advantage. Watch that great move. Hurdles his own man, then gets downfield and doesn't want to go down. Great job by Josh Smith, one of 2,000-yard rushers for Weir. Wow, that was quite a run and quite a hurdle. Devin Clemens finally made the stop, first and 10 from the 49-yard line. Smith with a team-high 18 uh, touchdowns this year. And this time it will be Lions. And Lions is bumped out of bounds near the 35-yard line. So the 2,000-yard rushers this year for Weir with impressive runs on back-to-back -back plays. And what you saw was a difference in two different runs. We had last time it was Josh Smith 
making the play. This time, watch the offensive line just seal off the hole. I mean, Dave, you and I together could have gone through there and gotten some yardage on that play. Uh, Corey Lyons doing a nice job. Uh, maybe you, Scott. I don't know if both of us could have <laughs> made it through there. First and 10 from the 36-yard line out of the eye. A wide receiver to each side this time for the Red Riders. Again, they'll go to the fullback. Smith, last time he touched it, he had 26 yards. He's got big yardage again. It's a race to the end zone. Needs a block. Touchdown, Red Riders. Smith, 26, 36 yards on the touchdown run. And Weir draws first blood in the West Virginia Class AA Championship game. That was a great play call because what they'd done, the previous plays, was run towards the near sideline. That time, they went uh, on a counter play. Great job. You got to like it. Smith, you score a touchdown, then you stay on the field and you kick the extra points. Smith with his 19th touchdown of the year. The snap is high. It's a fake to the end zone. Incomplete. So Weir with a little trickeration. They snapped the ball to the holders for Laza, but the pass to the end zone was incomplete. Nevertheless, Weir's in front. Six nothing. We're back to Wheeling Island Stadium in a moment. Well, Weir's in front, six nothing. Josh Smith, a 36 yard touchdown run. The two point pass attempt for the conversion failed. Here's another look at the touchdown, Scott. Watch the counter play here. You get the line, the offensive line going left to fool them thinking the deep, to get the defensive line thinking you're running that way. You run the other way. You see all the open space and great job blocking downfield. You'll see one of the receivers right there keeping him away there, allowing Smith to get in. Great play call there. And I'll tell you what, Bluefield had the ball for so much time, but it's the points that matter and Weir's on top. There's Smith going untouched into the end zone for our first touchdown of the Super Six weekend. This guy, you make a great point because all three of Bluefield's possessions here in the first half, they have been in weird territory. They have nothing to show for it. And the way the karma of football works, <laughs> if you don't take advantage of your opportunities, eventually they go away. Yeah, the football gods only give you so many opportunities. You do have to take advantage of them, Dave. Jonathan Payne is back to receive this kick. It's a short kick, and it will go out of bounds. Man, oh, man, Eric Meek did not like to see that. No, you know, and we talked about the, the kicking issue. Uh, Jared talked about that at the beginning of the game for Weir. The fact that kicker Ryan Dennis has been injured. Yeah, Ryan Dennis is kind of a, a, an unusual story. He was a senior. Kick out of bounds on the block, 35. And he was unable to go against Wayne last weekend because uh, a week ago on Friday, Weir was working out at Joan C. Edwards Stadium where Marshall University plays, and he injured his left knee. So he is not kicking off tonight. He is not handling the uh, the point after chores as well. And and that already had an effect in the game because I think that's why they called the fake there. They wanted Bluefield to think they were kicking the extra point. They went for two, didn't get it. So now Bluefield is behind for the first time tonight. And they'll go with a big fullback, Allen Carter, as they, they try the, the left side of the line. And that's a, that plays a winner on first down. It's a four-yard gain. It's second down and six. Yeah, you get four yards every play. I think you'll make Coach happy. You're going to definitely move the sticks. But Bluefield, again, given an opportunity here. We were talking about how they spent much of the first half, first quarter, excuse me, in Weir territory. Again, they start at the 35. Bluefield, again, getting a break. Yeah, that, that was a good look at the big guy, Carter. 262. Oh, my goodness. A great defensive play by Weir as Powell just simply disappeared. Nice defensive play by Jason Larch. And Powell comes up limping just a bit. Well, yeah, take another look at this play. Watch him get in the backfield and come in and crash Whoa. down. He never saw him coming from that angle, and that's how you can sometimes, uh, as you mentioned, he was limping, and that was a tough shot to take right there. Third down and a long five. Beavers need to reach their own 45-yard line. This is a possession down for Bluefield. And the Beavers this time will go with four wide trips to the right. First time we've seen this tonight. McClanahan back to pass, sidearms the ball out. Pass is knocked away from the intended receiver, Powell. And right now, Weir has got the eye of the Tiger. Nice hit by Smith. Again, we've talked about how Bluefield has had so many opportunities. They really have not taken advantage of them. you got to credit the weird defense for making sure that doesn't happen. Watch this. Yeah, it's on the fingertips, and you've got to pull the ball in. Josh Smith said, uh-uh, I'm knocking that out, and that's a big play for the weird defense. Punt formation 
first opportunity we've seen a Bluefield punt the football tonight. Cornelia sends this one down the field with a right foot. And the reception is made by Dotto. And Dotto is able to dance his way down the sidelines in front of the Red Rider bench. 28-yard punt. And Weir has got good field position for this drive. They've got the lead, 6-0. This one is coming back. Holding penalty is pending against the Red Riders. You find a lot of that. That penalty is called frequently when you end up taking the punt and deciding to run south first because you force your coverage to come back with you, and they make those kind of penalties. It's very hard for a guy blocking to try to retreat and keep somebody Walk off. Walk in the back on the block. Eight fifty-eight to go until halftime. This is a West Virginia American Water timeout. We're back with more from Wheeling Island Stadium in a moment. It is great to be back in Wheeling. Great to be back in the Super Six. And glad you're watching our broadcast tonight. We're sponsored by Charter Communications. It's a cold one, and it's been a hard-hitting first half. Just under nine minutes to go before halftime. Weir has got the ball, and they've got the lead. 6-0 on the defending champs in West Virginia Class AA, the Bluefield Beavers. On first down from the 25-yard line, they will operate out of the eye. And we've got some pointing across the line, and it looks like this is going to cost Weir five. Dead ball. Ball start on the black. All right, the road to Wheeling for both of these teams has been very interesting, maybe especially so for Bluefield, the number 11 seed. First down and 15 from the 20 yard line. McClanahan with the handoff and he'll go wide with Lyons and Lyons reads the blocks beautifully, stays on his feet and he nearly got it all back. And I tell you what, <laughs> we're lucky that Weir wasn't, uh, rather Bluefield wasn't called on a late hit there as Lyons goes out of bounds after a 16 yard gainer. Now let's check the road to Wheeling. And the road to Wheeling for Bluefield. This was an interesting road here. Now, Liberty, they defeated 24 to 8. And they got a, a big break in the quarterfinal round. Grafton upset Herbert Hoover in the round of eight. If Hoover had won, Bluefield would have had to gone up Elk River to play. Instead, they got to play at Mitchell Stadium, and uh, they handled Grafton with ease, 35 0. And then last week in the semifinal round, they handed James Monroe their first loss of the season in a very impressive performance. The road to first Wheeling down. for Weir. They defeated Logan 66 0. That's a record for playoff differential. Then they took care of Scott 34 8. And then last week, they defeated Wayne, the top seed in AA, 22 7. First and ten. Spurlaza spins away. And he's got all kinds of trouble, and he's going to be sacked. Beautiful defensive play. A great sack by Matthew Carter, the junior. Carter did a great job pursuing him down the line. And again, uh, it, as a right-handed quarterback, it is very difficult to get rid of that ball when you're running the opposite direction. Take a look here as they flush him out of the pocket. And there's not just one guy after him. The whole Bluefield defense was out there making it impossible for, for McClanahan to get away. And that is just a, a great job by the Bluefield defense. So it'll be second down now and 20. Again from the eye. They'll go to the tailback, and the, it, it appeared as if Lyons may, his knee may have touched down, but it's, uh, we'll have to take another look at that, Scott. And again, it's Carter who came up with a stop. Yeah, Carter's proven himself to be important on this drive. Yeah, see, yep, the knee did yeah. come down there, as you mentioned, Dave, and that, uh, see if the referee spotted back there. But uh, great job by the Bluefield defense. They're attacking the ball. Well, I, I think that. Weir got the benefit of that call, but uh, that was only a yard. It'll be third down and 20. <laughs> Line of scrimmage at 25. Spurlaza with good protection. Sends this one down the middle of the field. Pass is tipped. Knocked away. Incomplete. 
by Bluefield with some good defense in that series. Sean Brooks that was kind of an ugly series for Weir, and the Red Riders will have to punt it away. The, the thing about Weir so far in this game, David, to me, the, the thing that strikes me about what they've done so far is they seem kind of out of sync. You know, they came out, and you have to wonder if maybe that, that altercation at the beginning of the game maybe knocked them off a little bit off their game. But uh, uh, so far, I've not been impressed with how they've looked, uh, although they are leading this game. Now, Weir set the punt this football away. And, of course, they've already had a little bit of trouble on, on punts tonight. They send this one down the field. Buffo, uh, not a very long punt, but he did get it away. And this will go out of bounds at the 49-yard line. So Bluefield trails 6 nothing, but they've got good field position after that punt travels only 23 yards. Always a good idea to bring a blanket if you're in the double-A championship game, the Friday night game. She looks pretty happy, though. Yeah, well, she check those she, muffs. You should look at the colors. Weir's in front six nothing. Yeah, she's happy, and she should be. Th those fans, on the other hand, do not look quite as happy, and they're across the field. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun to sit out if you're losing. No, not at all. But you, it's really probably about 20 degrees colder if you're on the losing side of this deal. First and ten for Bluefield at their own 49 yard line. They trail it six nothing. And as Powell reached the 50-yard line, he is rudely sent back. Joshua Lang, you know, six foot, 300 pounds, and a senior. It's going to take more than one guy to push him out of the way. Yeah, he definitely takes up a lot of space. And I don't know if Weir is really sending a spy out there, per se, on Powell. But Powell's had a very hard time getting going here so far in this game. And got to credit the Weir defense or the scheme for at least keeping him in check. It's hard to believe we're watching the same Bluefield team in this double-A championship that scored 69 points last year in route to victory over Wayne. Oh, great defensive play. Great penetration, shooting through there to make the stop again is Larch, and he is having a first half for Weir. I'm sure you could probably hear that. I know both you and I kind of jumped when we heard that hit. That was a great hit by Larch, and sometimes you can send a message to a back, don't come my way when you see that. Take another look here. Watch Larch come shooting up the middle like he was shot out of a cannon. Knocks him down there. Great play by Jason Larch in the backfield. And that was a first carry for Devin Clements. You know, last week, seven different Beavers carried the football. They had five different running backs score touchdowns against Grafton. Clements got the ball and got drilled third down. McClanahan is going to send this one up, and it's nearly and should have been intercepted by Dewan Smith. Weird defense brought a blitz on that play, and it seems like it threw McClanahan off just enough that he had to hang that one in the air, and that was a missed opportunity by Weir. So far, I think the, the way to title this game is missed opportunities, especially for Bluefield. As we take another look at this one, you're going to see the blitz getting in the way. That forces the throw to go a little higher, get a little bit of more air under it, and what do you know? Missed opportunity. Uh, so Bluefield unable to take advantage of that terrific field position again. And Fred Simon has a problem, did not like that alignment, so he has to burn a timeout. This is a West Virginia American water timeout. So the defenses have really tightened up. Well, last year, of course, uh, what, a, what a night for the Bluefield Beavers. They win the state championship for Fred Simon. Fred Simon Jr., by the way, is on the coaching staff as well. And 69 points in the final. That was a, a record total. They beat Wayne 69-24. And uh, Jerome Powell had a big, big play in that game. Every pass going to put it up. Going to send this to the Look end zone. This. Wide open. Touchdown. Jerome Powell. That's an 18-yard score. I was on top of the world when I scored a touchdown. I mean, the first one I got all year, the rest of them got called back. So I was on top of the world. For, to the beginning of this year, I'm still been happy about the touchdown. So now we're we'll get an opportunity to get the football again. This punt is going to go inside the 20-yard line and finally roll dead at the 16. It's going to be interesting to see now, Dave, how Weir responds because they really haven't been moving the ball aside from the possession where they scored the touchdown. So you're giving, uh, if they cannot move the ball here, 
you're going to end up giving Bluefield even better field position than they just had, and they've really been in Weir territory the whole second half. So this is a big possession for Weir to, if not score, at least get out of their own side of the field. Now, uh, JT Powell, of course, was um, very excited about that touchdown. He scored in last year's game. He's been playing a big role in tonight's game for the Beavers on offense and defense. First and 10 from the 16. Looking for a little cross buck action to Smith, and Bluefield having none of it. Jeremy Hurt lays a hurt on the tailback for Weir. Yeah, we talked about a big hit on the last possession where it was a Weir defender coming in, Jason Larch. Now you see for Bluefield, a big smackdown coming in from Jeremy Hurt. We're going to take another look at this one. Well, a correct no, take another look at it. Just trust me, that was a big hit, and we again heard it up here. So when you can bring that kind of hurt for Jeremy Hurt, uh, that definitely sends a message. Second down and 14. Line of scrimmage is now the 12-yard line. Both these teams look over on the sidelines. They have lots of players. Weir has got 62 players on their roster. That's more than many AAA teams have. And it's Malaza. He's sacked inside the five-yard line. And the defense, what is it? Hurt? has back-to-back -back big plays. In that last series, it was Matthew Carter. In this series, it's Jeremy Hurt with two huge defensive plays for Bluefield back-to-back. -back. What did I say when they started this possession? They need to go the other direction. Now they're going backwards, and now they're inside their own five-yard line, and Weir's not going to keep the lead in this game if they don't quit going the wrong direction. The line of scrimmage officially is the five, so this is third down and 21. Got to wonder if Eric Meek's going to put this ball up here in such a dangerous situation. Yes, he will indeed. Of course, Perlaza is tripped up. He was tripped up at the line of scrimmage, and he falls forward for a short game. Far short of the first down in Bluefield, once again, is going to have fabulous field position. You talked about whether or not he was going to throw that one in the air, and I think that was a great play call. Watch the pursuit here by Bluefield. It was a nice quarterback draw. If he breaks that one tackle, I'll tell you, he's going to get at least another 10 yards. It was a good safe call there by Eric Meeks, but uh, unfortunately, it did not get anywhere. So Bluefield, as you mentioned, getting great field position yet again. Oh, he mentioned Carter, he's the one who came up with a good play. That's a very short punt. It takes a weird roll, and it will continue to roll for Weir. It will finally go dead at around the 48-yard line. And all things considered, that's a terrific punt. A great job by Buffo. Bluefield brought, I think, 10 guys on that play, and that really caused the punter to have to struggle to get that ball out of there. Fortunately, the ball is oblong. It takes funny bounces that time, and if you're a Weir fan, fortunately for you, it took the bounce in your favor. That was a 40-yard punt and no return, and that is about as good as you can expect from that situation. Once again, Bluefield with terrific field position as they start this drive with three and a half minutes to go before halftime. If I'm Fred Simon, I'm challenging my offense on that sideline to say, hey, we're not going to get many more opportunities like this. You better take advantage of this one. All right, and uh, we want you to stay tuned at halftime because former WVU star and former star of the Weir Red Riders, Quincy Wilson, will join us live at halftime. This is a timeout for Bluefield. It's a West Virginia American Water timeout, and it is their third and final timeout of the first half. As you mentioned, the third and final timeout, and we keep hitting on it because it's very important here. Bluefield having so many opportunities. Now they've used all their timeouts. There's three and a half minutes to go in the first half, and at times that can be a lot of time left on the clock when you might get down to one minute to go and you wish you had one of those timeouts left. Here's what's coming up on our West Virginia American Water Halftime Program. We'll profile Ryan Albert. We'll talk a little bit about football in the Ohio Valley, and we'll check all the stats and highlights from our first half. And uh, when you talk about scoring highlights, there's only really one for <laughs> Weir. Josh Smith, a 36-yard touchdown run earlier in the second quarter, and that's where we stand. And uh, how many times when you get down into a championship game is it one big play that can turn the whole thing around? And that might be the situation tonight. It is 6-0 Weir, and we're getting late in the first half. Four wide this time for Bluefield. Second time tonight, the Beavers have showed this formation, and they set up the screen, and the pass is incomplete. Well, they had that set up beautifully, and McClanahan could not complete the pass. 
Yeah, they did a nice job of coming out of the timeout. They had the play they wanted called, and it, it was a good play call. Uh, but then it comes down to execution. And your guys, you know, you can only make the calls and put your players in the right position. Take another look at this. Sold it very well. you got to make that catch. And if you do, you're going to find yourself with some yardage. And uh, unfortunately for Bluefield, yet again, another missed opportunity. Yeah, Clemens could not make the catch. And uh, the sophomore, McClanahan, was absolutely drilled by Smith just as he let that ball go. Second down and 10. And again, Beavers will show four wide. Pain in motion. And nearly fumbled the ball. McClanahan had a problem with that snap. Red Simon, a little bit of frustration, I'm sure, beginning to set in on their offense. Yeah, it, you know, you got to take another look at this. And it looked like a little misconfusion back there, a uh, misunderstanding between the, uh, the quarterback and the running backs there as far as who was actually supposed to get the ball. And you put the pigskin on the carpet and uh, you're lucky to get it back because sometimes those turnovers can be very costly. All right, third down and a dozen. Line of scrimmage is the 49. And trailing, and, and in this situation, unless they pick up the first down here, i got to believe the Beavers are going to punt this ball away. Four wide, trips to the right. Three-step drop for McClanahan. And the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Jonathan Payne. And uh, I want to bring Jared Fialco back into the conversation a little bit. Jared, uh, Bluefield this year, they're really missing a big-time weapon in the place-kicking area, aren't they? That's right. When you talk about offensive graduating seniors, you usually don't place kickers near the top of the list. But for the Beavers, that's certainly the case. Lucas Stone, an all-state kicker, graduated last year. He actually set multiple records throughout the playoffs, most field goals in a, in a game, longest field goal made in a state title game. And if you think about it, talk about missed opportunities, the Beavers turned the ball over and down on the Red Riders 26 and 27 yard lines. That's a 43 and 44 yard field goal attempt there. There's a good chance that Lucas Stone last year had he had been in and he had been put in to kick that field goal, he might have made it and we might be looking at a 6-6 game, guys. All right, thanks so much. A 37 yard punt and Gatto with the punt return and we had <laughs> We had a couple of huge blocks thrown in that return. I'll tell you what, both teams have come out looking to hit in this game. Watch this block here by Josh Smith. Uh, yeah, you're in the screen, and now oh. you're out of the screen. That hurts on a cold night like this, and I am really impressed by the way both teams have come out here with the intensity we talked about in pregame and take another look again, and both teams are really laying it on each other. Yeah, definitely you can see the dislike in the hits. Well, Josh Smith is having himself a championship game, a big Get hit, him. and he Get has him. got the touchdown as well. And not only that, he's got the football on this carry. Yeah, you say, hey, uh, great job on the block. Now let's give you the ball. And unfortunately, it looks like he might be hurting a little bit after that carry. Makes you wonder if maybe a part of the result there might have been the big hit he just delivered on special teams. So Smith is down. He is on his back. Let's take a look at this, see what we can see has uh, happened. Looks like he's getting tugged on. and I really can't tell what's going on there unless he uh, got the wind knocked out of him if he landed on the ball at all. Not sure if it, what happened when Steptoe went across him, but he's back up, and he'll head to the sidelines. Smith, 6 feet, 190 pounds, a senior. Rushed for over 1,300 yards heading into this game, a team-high 19 touchdowns. And we think he may have taken a bad step. Let's check his ankle. Watch his feet here. Oh, yep, definitely. Right there, you can yeah. see at the bottom corner of your screen, he was landed on by, uh, that was J.T. Powell that landed on his ankle. He's trying to get it loosened up over there. I think Josh Smith will be fine. He's a football player. Smith with a touchdown run tonight. He had a six-yard touchdown run and a 14-yard touchdown catch at Wayne last week. Coming back to the action, and this time it's Corey Lyons, and Lyons will take it out near the 28-yard line for a gain of five. And right now, Weir doesn't really appear to be in the hurry-up mode. Uh, if, you've, if you've been seeing their possessions so far, I don't know if I'd be in a hurry-up mode either because if they give Bluefield the ball back again, one of these times Bluefield will convert. Right now we're doing a great job of uh, just making sure they keep the ball and that they're going to be the last ones to have it tonight. Here you see the rushing yards. We are doing a great job of uh, pounding up some yards on the ground. Yeah, we're with 88 yards. Earlier this year in the playoffs, Bluefield held Grafton to 72 rushing yards and Liberty to 49. 
Smith is back in the game, and he is ridden down from behind by Sean Brooks. And this might be the time if Fred Simon had any timeouts to use. He might have used them, but the Beavers have already burned all three of their timeouts. Yeah, that, that could be costly, as we talked about. Now, watch Josh Smith here when he looks to go upfield. you got to wonder how much that ankle injury may have played on him there, because I didn't see the burst that he had in the first quarter. And that pass is caught. So Gatto was able to make a fine adjustment on the ball. He comes back to it. And they're able to click and keep the drive alive to the 47-yard line of Bluefield. And Gatto comes up with a big catch, and Weir says, hey, okay, we'll call a timeout. So this is a West Virginia American Water timeout. And the Weir fans getting fired up. They would love to put another score up on the board before halftime. They're stopped with 58 seconds remaining till halftime. That was a, a, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't have to be pretty to go down as a nice play. Uh, that ball hung up in the air. There were two Bluefield defenders around it, but a great job by Gatto making sure he's the guy that comes down with the ball. And look at Fred Simon right there, laying into his players uh, on the other side of the field. And we are trying to get, get regrouped there on the sideline and get the next play called. Let's take another look at this. Watch Gatto get a little separation, come back to the ball, and make a nice catch there at midfield, so putting himself between the defender and the ball, that is textbook. If you're a youngster watching this, that's what you want to do. Now Gatto in the second round playoff victory against Scott, his 16th touchdown catch was a weird high school record. Last week at Wayne, he really didn't get that many looks because the Pioneers were double and even triple teaming him. He had stopped playing football altogether when he got to Weir, but uh, the quarterback, Brandon Sperlaza, and some of the other teammates got him back out on the field, and that's been good news for the Red Raiders. And Steptoe fires through for the sack. Travis Steptoe coming through and making a big defensive play for Bluefield. During the timeout, I saw Bluefield head coach Fred Simon over there challenging his players to make a play in this last minute because if they go down by two touchdowns, that could be very tough. Second down and 17. Back to the live action. This is Perlaza. He was just buried at the 44-yard line. Bluefield is trailing, but they are absolutely hitting. Ryan Albert with a big tackle. Ryan Albert. This is interesting. Weir this. has taken a timeout on this uh, with with as few time as left on the clock here. Uh, and let's take another look at that. You see him brought down in the backfield. This is not Spurlaza's uh, fun time at the end of the first half. Well, you know, that we're, we're just using that as a promo for our halftime show because we have <laughs> a feature on Ryan Albert coming up at the break. Look at Fred Simon here just challenging his players. I think he, he's disappointed in, in the lack of uh, uh, the ability of, of, for his team to take advantage of the opportunities they've had. And right now, you see him pointing at the scoreboard. He's saying, come on, guys, we're down 6 nothing. Let's keep it that way because we can turn this game around in the second half. Yeah, defensive-minded game tonight here in Class AA, unlike last year's championship game, a 69-24 shootout. Bluefield winning over Wayne. Eric Meek. He's seen his Red Riders outscore their opponents this year, 492 to 101. We're all time, 19 and 7 in the state playoffs with five championships. Back in the finals for the first time since 1998. Third and 19. Sperlaza cranking it up again for Gatto. Gatto again makes the adjustment, and he pulls it in outside the 20-yard line. He's got it ruled down at the 23. That's a gain of 21, and Gatto is making a, a living on this drive, coming back to the football on these long passes. That's what he's got to do, and he's a senior. He's been through this. That's great experience on his part to get up there and make a great play yet again. Sperlaza. Rolling, throwing, passes. That's a catch, and it's Gatto again. He's got it at the 15. As far as putting your name in for early candidate for player of the game, I think right now Jason Gatto is doing a great job of that. Great catch as he went out of bounds. Now, let's not forget, they do not have their place kicker, and right now this is an area of the field and a part of the game where you would love to have your place kicker, Ryan Dennis, again injured. Josh Smith went out to kick the extra point before, but they had called a two-point conversion a fake. That was a fake. And, and uh, so right now we don't know what kind of kicking game they have. So if they can't punch it in, this could be an interesting decision. Scott, that's a great point. So we expect Weir to go to the end zone here. It's second and a yard. Out of the eye, two wide receivers to the left. Sperlaza inside the 10. 
So it's first down and goal. The clock stops long enough for them to reset. And now a timeout called by Weir. This is a West Virginia American Water timeout. This is the perfect part of the field for any coach to say, okay, normally you'd go, we take one shot here, and then I'm kicking the three. And, and so this is an interesting decision here for Eric Meek for Weir if they do not get in on this next play because they're only going to be left with three seconds or so. And uh, this has been an interesting drive for Weir. Let's take a look at some of these catches by Jason Gatto. He's the man of the hour right now if you're a Weir fan. Look at this. Again, come back to the ball, put yourself between the ball and the defender, and then he realizes he's not going to get much further, so he goes down. Then the next catch, great concentration here. He knows he's going to take a hit. Watch near the sideline. He pulls this one in and gets the foot down. Great job by Jason Gatto. Well, so Gatto with three catches on this drive and in those two long catches, he was able to get Jonathan Payne turned all around. Now the line of scrimmage is the five yard line. Seven seconds remain. So you have time for one, possibly two plays here. And there are no timeouts left for Weir, so I look for them here to, to go to the sideline or work anywhere in the middle of the end zone. But watch watch out for Sperlaza here towards the end zone. Watch for something here. Gatto is split out wide to the left. Sperlaza on the roll line. Let's it go to the end zone in traffic and knocked away. And it was Payne who was beaten on those two big plays. He comes up with a big defensive play and knocks the football away from Gatto. That saved a touchdown. Now we have .9 seconds remaining in the first half. Take another look at this. Run in the wrong way if you're going to try to set yourself to throw this. Watch his throw. He almost starts. Throw. Yeah, just, yep, there you go, right? Just let it go and gets it in there. An amazing oh. throw from that angle. Gatto, the man of the hour so far for Weir on this drive. Comes up and it has a great defensive play there, knock it away from the touchdown, and they are going for it on this play. Less than a second remains. Nine tenths of a second, but time enough for a snap. Sperlaza to the end zone. Passes incomplete. And it was Jordan Taflin unable to hold on to that football. It looked as if he had it for an easy touchdown. He couldn't hold it. Time has expired. Where? Boy, that was an opportunity uh, that goes by the board, but the Red Riders go back to the locker room with the lead 6 0. If you're Jordan Taflin, you end up losing this game. This one's going to haunt you for tonight and the rest of possibly your high school career. In the bread basket, yeah. Oh. Hard to blame the hands on that one. Jordan Taflin, a junior, on that play. And again, I go back to the fact that they could not kick a field goal there because that is the time when you could take a 9 0 lead, two possession lead, and that could be very important. We've got Fred Simon down on the sidelines. Let's send it down to the field. Coach, a lot of missed opportunities in that first half. Missed opportunities for them as well. What is your assessment of this first half? We have got to do a better job of our opportunities. Uh, so that, that's what we got to do, Jared. Uh, you're exactly right in what you said. Uh, got to contain them a little better. Uh, but when we get a chance to score, we've got to do something besides getting a penalty. Up until that last drive, you had really been keeping quarterback Brandon Sperlaza in check, too. That's probably a good thing for your defense. Well, we can keep him in check for a while, but he's a hell of an athlete. So, you know, we've got to, we've got to keep him in check a, bit, a little bit better, but, you know, we're doing our best. How tough, how tough is that when you got three mark, three guys crossing the millennium mark, two at the tailback who's got a thousand yard rushing, and a quarterback who's thrown for 1,300? Well, how do you determine where to focus your energy? Well, we just try to do whatever we can. They, they have an awful good ball club, and we're, and we're just trying to do a better job in the second half. All right, Coach, best of luck to you in the second half. Thank for you. two teams that have had some high powered offenses here, 6 0, a very interesting halftime score, guys. All right, Jared, thank you so much. Our West Virginia Water American. Halftime show is in a moment. <laughs> We're Leeds Bluefield 6 <laughs>
touchdown run. The two-point conversion pass attempt failed. That's where we stand, 6-0. Obviously, Bluefield has got a lot of tradition when it comes to West Virginia high school football. It's also a family affair when you talk about the Beavers. For more on that story, let's send it down to Jerry. Well, guys, are you a little superstitious? Well, if so, this one might be for you. A family legacy and Beaver uh, Bluefield High School tied together by the numbers five and four. On the surface, there's nothing special about the numbers five and four placed side by side. Dozens donned the digits over the years for Bluefield High School. But for one family of Beavers, the jersey represents more of a family crest. Well, they mean quite a bit. Uh, my brother wore number 54 and won a state championship in 1967. I wore it uh, and won a state championship in 1975. Ryan wore it in 2004 and won a state championship. And God willing, we'll maybe win another one in 2005. It's just tradition. Bluefield High School is tradition, and that's just part of the tradition. The legacy began nearly 40 years ago when late Bluefield coach John Chamara presented Ryan's uncle Bill Albert with 54. Symbolic because it meant Bill would be dressing for games. Since then, the jersey somehow found its way onto the back of each and every Albert since then. Randy and Ryan originally wore numbers 37 and 10 respectively at Bluefield until rule and position changes forced a change of shirts for the duo, giving the jersey a sort of majestic aura. I guess you would have to say there is since there's four genera generations that have worn this number, so I'd say there is. The only shortcoming in the 54 legend was Ryan's cousin David, who advanced all the way to the class AAA state semifinals, but no further. The Alberts hope tonight's outcome may in some way rectify that. It's only right that uh, four Alberts have worn it and we have four state championships to show for it. And while we're fans might call that greedy, the Albert family just hopes to call it destiny. We'll have plenty more here from halftime. Quincy Wilson, the former Weir star, will be joining us. Six nothing Weir leads. We're at halftime at the Double A state title game. Welcome back to the West Virginia American Water halftime report. Weir with a six nothing lead on the Bluefield Beavers. Well, Scott, one thing that we're really experiencing this weekend at Wheeling Island Stadium is the outstanding level of competition of, in Northern Panhandle football. We checked in with the head coach of Weir to get an explanation on why the competition of football is so good in this end of the state. Well, it's very important. High school football is an important part of the culture in the Ohio Valley. And, uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting. On Friday night, someone once said if you took a helicopter down the Ohio River in, in the Ohio Valley on a Friday night and you could go over top all of the stadiums with the lights on. It'd be a neat thing because the people do come out. It's a happening and it's very important and, uh, and that's why the kids want to spend the extra time in the weight room and the extra time uh, studying film and, and uh, we certainly hope to have a big following down at the island this Friday night. All right. Well, obviously, we've had a, a terrific first half. Weir is two quarters away from a double-A state championship. Let's send it down to Jared, who's standing by with someone who's very familiar to both Weir and WVU football fans. Well, Scott, you talked about levels of high competition. Standing right next to a man who knows all about competition, Quincy Wilson. You said this was kind of a homecoming for you, wasn't it? It's definitely a homecoming. A chance to come back to the Valley, see my old high school playing a state championship. doesn't get any better than this. This is actually kind of a detour on your way to Pittsburgh this weekend for the big Bengals uh, Steelers game. You able to sneak away for a couple hours, you said, huh? Yeah, definitely get a chance to sneak around. They let me, they let a little, they gave me a little window, the opportunity. I was real fortunate uh, that it just worked out this way. That uh, Friday night we really have much going on, so it worked out definitely. Well, Quincy, I'm sure all these Red Rider fans are happy to see you back here. Best of luck to you, and best of luck to you in your NFL career, guys. Send it back up to you. All right, Jared, thanks so much. Our second half is coming up. We'll have more from Wheeling Island Stadium in just a moment. Third quarter kickoff coming. We're six, Bluefield nothing. <laughs> 